so welcome uh, welcome everyone uh, this is the 10th event of the joint um, lecture series of uh, the new school for social research and uh, at the faculty of social sciences um, populism in history and theory uh, and i'm honored to present you uh, andras jacob um, who is i think uh, among the Hungarian legal scholars, uh, um, for sure, but probably in Europe, one of the most well-known and maybe leading uh, legal scholar from uh, on the field of constitutional law, uh, comparative constitutional law, and uh, <clears throat> um, uh, from the from the younger generation, uh, we already had the. Uh, Gabor Halmai from uh, the older generation, and I think uh, Professor Jakob has the same reputation uh, from a younger generation. So, uh, uh, Professor Jakob is a, a, a professor of Austri uh, Austrian constitutional and administrative law uh, at the University of Salzburg. His lecture today uh, is based on his work on the European and Hungarian constitutions and uh, uh, his work uh, analyzing uh, uh, Hungarian and European constitutions entitled as Nation and Populism in the Constitution. Um, so Andras, Professor Reka, please uh, give your presentation. Thank you so much uh, for the introductory words, Martin, and thank you for the invitation to uh, Andrew and Antar to this uh, lecture series. Basically, what I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes is uh, a presentation based on a book chapter I published in European Constitutional Language. Uh, my book, European Constitutional Language. I try to share the screen. I hope that it is going to work. So, uh, I mean, the, the generic uh, topic of this lecture series is uh, is concentrating on populism, but uh, my topic is not precisely populism, but it uh, obviously that would be a topic for, for the discussion after my presentation, what's the relationship between populism and the constitutional visions of the, of the, of the nation. I'm going to present you a concept with a conceptual tool for analyzing constitutions. So what, uh, if you read a constitution, very often you have implied presuppositions about what the nation is and what, uh, what kind of uh, paradigm about the, the nation is contained in the, in the constitution. Mostly, the, I mean, sometimes it is explicit what, con what constitutions think or, or presuppose about the nation, but mostly, we, we find implicit or implied uh, 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 presuppositions about what what a nation is in constitutional text. And uh, I have identified uh, basically five, uh, by looking at many constitutions, I mean, uh, mostly in Europe, but not only Europe, uh, I have identified five uh, visions, or we can call them paradigms also. I like the word vision. It's uh, seems less or sounds less pretentious so five five visions of of uh, of the nation in, in in constitutional text and these five are uh, when I mean, the first one would be a classical nationalist vision when you have one state with one with one, one ethnic nation then a second vision uh, i mean the, the first one is basically just to simplify it and just to to give you an idea so you don't get lost in the in the details. It's uh, it's it's this 19th century nationalist vision of the state, and that's codified in, in constitutional text. The second one would be the one uh, state, one multi-ethnic uh, nation. Currently, if you want to look for a, an example, in a, uh, then then you should have a look at the Swiss constitution. That's uh, that's probably the nearest one to this uh, to this vision. The third one would be one state and several equal ethnic uh, nations. You have historical uh, examples for such uh, constructs. It would be like Austria and Hungary, but 
currently, if you if you if you're looking for 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 examples in in constitutions or constitutional documents, then for example, Bosnia and Herzegovina would be an example, uh, a good example for uh, for this, or even also the Belgian constitution. And the fourth one would be one state and the dominant uh, ethnic nation uh, with uh, with various uh, minority ethnic groups. I think this is, I would call this the, the mainstream European approach to the question, to the constitutional question of the nation. And you have a fifth one that's that's not that's that's different from the other four because in the in, in the first four, uh, so the first four regions of, of the nation, you have an ethnic vision. So you define nation as an ethnic nation, as a cultural, linguistic, uh, uh, historically grown political community. Whereas in the fifth one, you define the nation as, as a civic nation, meaning or defined by, by citizens' rights or, or, or defined by, by the rights that you, you have as a citizen. So these five visions are, I think, uh, useful in order to analyze uh, constitutions, contemporary constitutions. They are not perfect because even though I, I try to identify these five visions, in practice also it's getting murky and fuzzy. Some constitutions behave uh, towards certain ethnic groups in a very generous way and uh, towards other ethnic groups uh, uh, more traditional nationalistic uh, in a more, more traditional nationalistic manner. So in Western Europe, most uh, constitutions do recognize certain ethnic minority rights. Uh, I don't know, in, in Germany, Danes in the, at the northern border, at, at the border towards Denmark have special rights or even uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium, the the German Germans actually have special uh, minority rights. So you have special minority rights and normally also minority group rights. But if you are, I don't know, a Greek immigrant in uh, in Belgium, or if you are a Polish immigrant in in uh, in Germany, then uh, what you face is much is a much tougher stance and a much uh, more classic nationalistic vision of the nation. So in practice, in reality, it's it's murky, but I think still identifying these these uh, these visions and uh, I will go through them uh, uh, quickly. I mean, not in detail, but quickly uh, is useful to understand at, at least to in order to understand the, the theoretical options or the or the theoretical uh, possibilities that can be seen then in constitutional text. So the first one is a classic nationalistic uh, uh, vision. I'll try to make it bigger so it's easier to read. <clears throat> I mean, if we want to look for supporting theories, these are the classical uh, uh, ethnic nationalistic uh, theories, Mazzini, actually also Fichte, or so some Greek theorists. I don't know how much familiar with the work of Corais, uh, lived in uh, mainly actually in France and uh, wrote his. Uh, nationalistic theories in, in France. So if you look for supporting theories, then probably this would be, uh, the, these, the, these, these authors would, uh, would be the, the, the main ones or the, or the most important ones. Here, in this case, we, if we read the constitutional text and then we, we see an ethnic blindness, somehow the constitution doesn't seem to recognize uh, that there are also uh, individuals or groups living in that uh, country possibly even have uh, citizenship who do not belong to the uh, to to the official ethnic nation is just simply ignored uh, it's uh, like a conscious blindness toward, towards ethnic uh, 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 to, towards the ethnic variations of the, of, of the country the, the nation here predates the constitution, which is actually true for most of these visions. The only vision where the nation does not predate the constitution is the civic vision, because in the civic vision, it's not in all of them, but in most uh, theories of the, of, of the uh, or most uh, civic uh, uh, 
constitutional visions of the nation. It's actually the constitution which creates the nation. Here it's not the case. The nation is older. It predates the, 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 the constitution. Also, if you try to find out what's the, what, what the relationship between the people, meaning the, the body of the electorate and the, and, the, and, the, and the nation is, then in this region, they ought to coincide. So they ought to coincide either by assimilation. So in case, somebody doesn't belong to the nation, but, but is a citizen, that citizen actually should belong to the nation. So they should uh, become, I don't know, they should become Poles, they should become Hungarian, they should become French. So it's, uh, uh, they, should, uh, they should assimilate to the, to the, to the majority nation, or, or sometimes you can even find references uh, to, to a potential or to a, to uh, uh, to an ambition, the uh, expansion of the of the country, where they write about how they wish to be bigger. I also brought a few uh, extracts from various constitutions. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to show them uh, to you. Or exclusion: if you live in the country but you don't belong to the to the to the majority nation, uh, then you might even be excluded from that. I mean, one. Example again is would be probably the how nowadays uh, in the Baltic states the Russian minority is treated. Uh, most of them do not have the the, the citizenship. It's a very conscious constitutional design in order to exclude them from the it's classic nationalist division in order to exclude them from uh, from the Latvian, from the Estonian or the uh, Ukrainian uh, nation. It's classic. 19th century hardcore nationalism, which we find actually in these uh, uh, these countries nowadays. Uh, what what are the, the the relevant political communities and what is their uh, respective purpose? In this region, the ethnic nation is the political community, so no other political community is recognized at least on a constitutional level. It has its own existence, which is uh, independent from. Uh, the, the the individuals it has a collectivist uh, taste uh, also in the in the rhetoric we I, I brought a few preambles uh, which I'm going to show uh, to you where you can you can you can see this collectivist rhetoric in in constitutional preambles still uh, existing actually in in, in valid uh, I mean today valid constitutions do you have a recognition of group rights here. No, actually, that's uh, one of the key uh, issues. You don't have uh, group rights. I mean, at least not as, as, as minority rights. Sometimes minorities are even openly discriminated. Do you have any minority protection? No, that's the whole point. That's the whole kind of the core of this uh, of this uh, of, of this vision. In this vision, the the legal status of ethnic belong ethnic belonging is a public affair. You have to become. You have to be. Part of the of the of the state defining ethnic or ethnic group, uh, and uh, that's a public affair. It's not your private business. That's uh, that's something which uh, which which is a public issue. Do you have institutional support for ethnic identity? You you have institutional support, but only for the for the state defining or majority um, ethnic identity. What about complicatedness? I mean, I also compare the, the constitutions and, uh, and I have to say that this is probably the simplest one because you're blind. So in all other uh, 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 visions, you do have certain special rules uh, about minorities and groups. Uh, some of them are also very complicated. Here you don't have it. Why? Because uh, by definition, you're blind. So everybody just uh, you put up the, the glasses and everybody just uh, in your country everybody just seems to belong to the majority ethnic group what about naturalization rules i mean naturalization means to 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 grant uh, the citizenship to to foreigners so how you how you can naturalize uh, foreigners what are the, the 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 preconditions and here the preconditions are again defined culturally like in an ethnic uh, phrase you have to you have to show or you have to promise plausibly that you can assimilate uh, to the to the to the to the majority ethnic group by showing linguistic or, or, or cultural sometimes also or racial or, or, or 
or religious uh, uh, features. What are the nearest real life examples? As a matter of fact, uh, most European countries behave in this way towards newly arriving immigrants. That's the way they, uh, they, uh, they define the rules, but not towards autochthon, so traditional minorities who have been living there for centuries, for those uh, uh, ethnic groups, uh, uh, other rules apply. Going to come to that one. But there are also some countries which not only towards uh, uh, newly uh, arriving immigrants, but towards everybody behave in this classic uh, nationalistic uh, way. Some Central and Eastern European countries are like this, and Greece is actually, it's often forgotten, and, and it's shocking if you read the Greek, uh, current Greek constitution, how hardcore nationalistic the whole rhetoric, and not just the rhetoric, like preamble, but also the actual rules in that constitution are. So to what type of challenge does it provide an answer? I also checked, uh, or I, I was also trying, I also tried to speculate about, uh, about uh, the question how useful or how successful certain visions can be or in, in what uh, so, uh, social and political circumstances, other what social and political circumstances they can work. And this uh, type of, uh, of, uh, of vision can have some success or it can work, it, it, can, it can be uh, sustainable if the ethnic minorities are dispersed uh, in, a, in a country. So if, if there is no like, you know, one big block or one area where, uh, one geographic area where they are uh, uh, concentrated, typically like immigrants, they are normally dispersed or they are in major cities, but then again, it's not, you know, one area where uh, and they're specifically concentrated. Or it can also be useful, at least politically, if uh, there are major groups of kin ethnics uh, abroad and somehow you try to justify uh, stronger connections or sometimes even uh, military expansion towards uh, these. We can discuss that later, this, this danger of this, uh, of this, uh, of this vision. What are the advantages of this vision? I mean, this is a theoretically very clear cut. It's easily understandable. Uh, but what are disadvantages? Well, uh, the disadvantages uh, are that uh, basically he is, you don't, do not recognize the, the ethnic minorities, which can easily lead to animosity towards the, uh, to, towards the state. It can lead to a certain alienation towards the state if you are not recognized. Uh, as an ethnic minority. I also speculated with all these uh, visions about the chances of a development in the, in the EU in this direction. And this is just impossible that the EU as a nation, so I was speculating whether we can, I don't know, in 50 years, we can have a European nation or a European Union nation in this sense. And that's just uh, not possible demographically because you would need a dominant, like a demographically dominant uh, cultural, the defined national or, uh, or ethnic uh, nation in the EU, that's just not happening, it's, it's not possible. I'm not going to go through all of these uh, uh, options. We can talk about that uh, during uh, uh, the discussion. Actually, I'm going to skip the second one, the Swiss one, that's uh, pretty exotic and certain features of the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia were, were similar to that one. But uh, this is really something which, uh, which cannot be implemented. It can grow historically. And uh, if you try to implement it, then you can just, uh, you can only make it work by brute force. And once the brute force, like, I don't know, the dictatorship in Yugoslavia and, and Soviet Union are over, it's just falling apart. Interesting theoretically, but that's not really what uh, I think uh, defines uh, current constitutions except for the for the Swiss one. But I think the third one, the third vision is, 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 is more interesting. This is one state, several equal ethnic nations. 
what are here the, the supporting theories? Certain communitarian theories uh, can, can support uh, such a constitutional design or certain types of liberal nationalism, even Austro-Marxism uh, could support uh, such a constitutional design. As I said, just to, to clarify it so you don't get lost and you can identify what kind of state I'm, I'm talking about. This would be like Belgium, like a, the Belgian constitution. What do we have in the, in the, in the Belgian constitution? In the, the Belgian constitution is, I mean, first of all, it's extremely complicated. Uh, if you have ever read it, it's, it's, it's so difficult to, to understand the, the structure because they have, they have overlapping uh, uh, systems of communities and, uh, and uh, regions and that's basically a double federal system uh, where the territories are not entirely overlapping uh, and it's painstakingly detailed about uh, what kind of uh, uh, competencies can have the, the the flemish and what kind of competencies the the the, the french the wallon parts and then then Brussels is a special area. Even the Germans have have a have a special uh, area. The whole uh, the whole problem of the constitution is that, uh, or what is implied in the constitution is that there is no such thing as a Belgian nation. Basically, what you have is you have a Flemish nation, uh, you have a a, a Wallon nation, you have Brussels, which is something in between, and you have a German, like minority, uh, uh, recognized as 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 a, as a state constitution, state constituting uh, ethnic community. This whole system is so complicated. I mean, probably the only thing that you hear about uh, the, the 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 Belgian constitution is that there is a permanent uh, government crisis in Belgium, and that's. Uh, that's actually the consequence of this overcomplicated uh, constitutional system, and it is overcomplicated uh, exactly because uh, the the lack of mutual trust, because the 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 rules are so rigid, and the rules are so rigid because the primary political community in Belgium is not the Belgians, so there is not no such thing as a Belgian nation, but you have you have as primary political communities, the Flemish and the Wallons and a little bit uh, the, the, uh, the Germans. So if you want to speculate uh, how, how it is uh, related to, to, to the European Union, then probably the, the nearest, uh, uh, this is the nearest to, to the reality of, uh, of, of, of the European Union. Also, with all the problems of, uh, of, of national quotas, uh, uh, you know, you have to have, uh, I don't know, in the commission, one, uh, uh, one uh, uh, representative from, from, from every country, even though the, com the European Commission is supposed to be uh, not a representation of the, of the member states still, this is how it is, con uh, how it is constituted. Also, the usual problems, uh, I think it was a, it was a case from, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, an example. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, the, the constitutional system recognizes three political communities, the Serbs, the Croats, and the, and the Bosniaks. And uh, the problem is, what if you don't belong to any of them? And uh, there was also a famous case at the European Court of uh, Human Rights where an Albanian and also a, a Roma uh, 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 citizen tried to uh, run for public office, but public offices are actually divided according to which public office can go to, to which uh, uh, constituting uh, nation, and they were not allowed to run for the public office. And uh, this is actually a consequence also of this, uh, of this constitutional design. So, it's so much concentrating on the balance of the of the state constitution constituting nations that if you do not belong to any of the state constituting nations, then you will have also, uh, uh, or you might have, in practice, you will have uh, uh, civil rights uh, 
problems and, and uh, you will face discrimination. So that's uh, more or less like a, a failed vision how it, you know, how it doesn't work or how it shouldn't work, uh, the constitutional design. Number four, that's the, that's the usual, that's the mainstream uh, way how uh, European constitutions uh, uh, perceive the nation. If you read the preambles of, of, of European constitutional documents, then, then this is normally what, 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 they, what they presuppose. So there is one ethnic dominant nation. So it does have the state, does have a, a certain ethnic uh, character, but at the same time as a kind of a compromise, they also try to recognize and try to be generous and try to be kind towards uh, various ethnic uh, uh, minorities. So what kind of uh, supporting theories can be relevant here? Certain types of liberal nationalism uh, or, or communitarian theories can be, uh, can be uh, useful in order to, to, to justify such a constitutional design. What do, we, what do we find in such constitutions? On the one hand, uh, we find certain features which are very specific uh, uh, for a certain dominant ethnic group, like uh, defining the, uh, the constitution as symbols, like mostly like uh, the, 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 the flags or the holidays are defined according to the traditional flag or the holiday of an ethnic group and uh, and they do not try to find some kind of neutral uh, symbolism but they go for the symbolism of one particular ethnic uh, group but at the same time they you also have institutionalized uh, minority protection sometimes in extraterritorial territorial features but uh, but that's not uh, actually that's not necessary in this uh, vision, both the ethnic communities and the nation pr uh, predate the, the, the constitution. So the constitution, the way the constitution talks about the nation is, is, uh, is not that we create the nation, but we, the nation, create the constitution. And we also recognize the ethnic minorities, which have already existed here for several centuries. What about the relationship between the people, the electorate, and and uh, the the nation? Here, it is uh, it is realistic this vision in in the sense that uh, they accept the fact that they do not coincide. So we have the electorate, uh, you know, the, the sum of the citizens, and that's not the same as the nation. So that's the conceptually they they, they, they separate. Also. The main purpose uh, or, the, or the main uh, uh, idea would be to, to, to promote the, the group interests of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the constituting nation, but at the same time also accepting the, the minority uh, rights. So there is a right to be ethnically different. So you, you, you recognize uh, uh, Minority rights, uh, it is also a public, it's important here, it's also a public affair, whether you belong to uh, a minority, because if you belong to a minority, then you have special rights. Uh, uh, you might have uh, preferential representation in the, in the parliament, uh, you might have uh, uh, additional uh, uh, linguistic rights uh, in, 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 in your area and so on. In this vision, both the, the official ethnic identity and the ethnic identity of the, of, the, of, the, of the recognized minorities are supported. So, I don't know, in, in, uh, in, in Slovakia, if you are a Hungarian, then you, you can have certain special rights, but if you are, a, I don't know, a Russian immigrant in, in Slovakia, you won't have that. Again, it's divided according to, also within one constitutional system, what kind of uh, behavior is there. Of treatment is the rules are here moderately complicated, so it's not this I don't know Belgian chaos which nobody really understands. I even thought it's just a little anecdote. I talked to Belgian constitutional lawyers, several of them, and they all said that it's so complicated the Belgian competence system, which is uh, the competence according to the regional and community 
system that it is even for Belgian constitutional lawyers hardly understandable, and that's one of the contributing factors of the, of uh, of political stalemate, actually permanent political stalemate in Belgium. But here it's not the case. It's moderately complicated. It's manageable. Uh, most European states uh, adopted this uh, at least uh, towards uh, at least region, at least towards autochthon, so like uh, minorities which have been living there for several uh, generations. Uh, this vision is, is, is useful to, to smoothen conflicts. Uh, it is uh, also relatively realistic in the sense that it accepts, uh, uh, it accepts uh, uh, the fact that, uh, that these societies are at least historically multicultural or there are, there are various um, uh, uh, ethnic groups. Uh, I don't think, again, if you want to speculate whether in 50 years or in 100 years there will be such a thing as the European Union nation in this sense, I don't think it's possible, again, because here you would need a, a, a dominant ethnic nation, and there is no such thing in Europe, even the biggest one, the, the German one, which is uh, uh, the, the largest nation that's uh, maybe 10 percent and somewhat over 10 percent of the, of the population of the European Union. That's, uh, that's not really an option. And the final one, the final vision that I, I identified as a constitutional vision is this uh, basically the civic nation. So when you have one state but no ethnic nation, uh, here you have probably the most uh, famous theorist, uh, was theorist also traditionalist, or this French theories of civic citizenship, CIS, my favorite, or, or Renan, but also the, I think the, the Federalist Papers also belong to this tradition or from Germany that would be Habermann, uh, how he defines the uh, nation with this, with, with, with the Hassan's uh, business. Strangely, there is a common point between the classic 19th century nationalism and, and, and this ethnic, uh, ethnic civic vision because the common point is that both are ethnically blind, just uh, in in in, uh, in in different ways. Because here they are ethnically blind because they do not want to recognize the ethnic uh, nature or the ethnic uh, features of, of of their citizens, because they think that in this way they can they can realize uh, certain universalistic ideas. There is a famous uh, there is a famous. Uh, speech uh, by Theodore Roosevelt, where he says that, uh, that, uh, that uh, in America, at home, you can be Irish or you can be German, but on the street, we are all Americans. And this is also what, uh, what is supposed to uh, be seen on, on the level of constitutional rules. So it's, it's, it, it can be your private business if you have a certain ethnic uh, belonging, but uh, but uh, from, the, from, from, from the point of view of the political system and the, from the point of view of constitutional law, uh, we should be blind about that. We shouldn't uh, uh, consider it. What's interesting here is and that's, that difference then differentiates, discriminates this, uh, this vision from all the others uh, is that here the constitution constitutes the, 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 the nation. There are some other conceptual tricks by CIS who defines it a bit differently, but uh, let's just con concentrate on this main feature that here the constitution makes the nation. So without constitution, there is no nation. Constitution makes the nation and ensures that everybody has the same rights. And uh, that also means that by definition, the sum of citizens has to be the same as the nation. So there is no conflict between these two concepts because they conceptually uh, coincide. It's also characteristic for, for such constitutions that, uh, that they emphasize very much universalistic ideas. And it seems like you have the impression when you read these constitutions, especially the preambles, as if they, their main purpose would be the re realization of these universal ideas instead of promoting the interest of certain uh, groups. 
so it's much more idealistic in that sense uh, the, the the language of the of, of this constitution here fundamental rights are perceived as uh, as, as, as individual rights or so no group rights uh, there are again some exceptions but that would be the the, the, the traditional uh, or the or the paradigmatic vision of, uh, of, of this approach. Again, it's it's a private matter. It's a private matter to which ethnic group you are belonging. I, I think I mentioned uh, what Theodore Roosevelt said, but basically you you can also see it based on the constitution because there is nothing in the constitution about uh, <laughs> about this issue, which also makes these constitutions, uh, at least from this point of view, relatively simple. Uh, so the US is probably the best example for this. There are again exceptions, there are special rules for Indian tribes, we can talk about that also under US uh, constitutional law, which absolutely doesn't fit into this paradigm, but this, uh, this is more for, uh, I don't know, constitutional law experts who are really interested in exceptions. But in general, the US constitutional law would be the best, uh, like current example for, for this. Or, from the French Revolution, you can uh, get a few constitutions which were written in this uh, sense. Not today's uh, French constitution, but it's a bit more uh, complicated. So, if you, I mean, this 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 vision is probably theoretically the most uh, elegant. Here you have the most uh, most famous uh, theorists. Uh, uh, I don't know for for classic. Uh, uh, nationalist visions, you really have like second rank uh, uh, political philosophers. Here you have, you know, the the best of the best. Uh, it's uh, theoretically definitely the, the most uh, sophisticated. Also here it's by definition, basically the whole definition is defined by, by rights. Uh, sorry, the whole nation is defined by rights. Uh, that also means that uh, the protection of fundamental rights uh, is uh, is is much less of a problem here than in potentially than than, than in any other vision. Uh, what's the main problem with this vision? The main problem with this vision is, uh, well, that it's blind. So it pretends that uh, that that constitutionally it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, ethnic groups uh, we have and that. Actually, they, are, they don't uh, exist. It also pretends that ethnically the state is neutral, which is not really true. Even in the US Constitution, the US Constitution is defined by basically by, by uh, uh, English uh, Protestant uh, values. Uh, uh, so it's not universalistic in that sense. Uh, the, the ideas that were that that drove the the founding fathers of the U.S. Constitution were were uh, uh, British Protestant uh, uh, ideas, which have been then codified into the U.S. Constitution. What about the EU? Can the EU adopt this type of uh, uh, vision? I would say that probably in 50 years, if you're very optimistic, that would be something that uh, that that can characterize the European Union. We already have signs which show into this direction. Also, the rhetoric of certain EU documents, uh, 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 certain declarations by the European Parliament. Uh, also, in the preambles, you have uh, you have uh, uh, statements which which uh, which show into this direction. Also, the fact that you have a, a European citizenship shows into this direction. It is again, it is defined by by, by by rights and not by certain uh, ethnic belonging. So these are these are the five uh, visions I wanted to show you, and then I also brought a few few extracts from from constitutions. Can you see? Are you still with me here? It's you know this usual question. Can you see now my paper on the yes. Greek constitution? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Okay. So I just I just brought a few quotes from from various uh, constitutions, uh, which concentrate exactly on 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 these topics, 
And I think they have also been uploaded. So for the participants, if they are curious about uh, the documents, they all have been uploaded uh, somewhere on your course website, as far as I'm, I'm, uh, I have been informed. So in the Greek constitution, so the, the beginning of the Greek constitution in the name, so not in the name of the, of, of, of the people, or not in, and even not in the name of, of, of the citizens of Greece, no. The Greek constitution was adopted in the name of the holy and consubstantial, consubstantial and indivisible trinity. So it's a very strong religious, actually orthodox uh, Christian reference, uh, which again, obviously excludes everybody else who is not orthodox uh, Christian. In the, in the Greek constitution, you find no words about minority rights. It's just non-existent in Greek constitutional law. Uh, and then a few, few uh, uh, provisions, which I think are relevant. Article 1, paragraph 3, all powers are derived from the people, exist for the benefit of the people and the nation. Uh, and then Article 120, paragraph 4, observance of the constitution shall be committed to the patriotism of the Greeks. Quite harsh. In the Irish constitution, what do we find in the Irish constitution? Uh, well, article one, the Irish nation hereby affirms its inalienable, indefeasible and sovereign right to choose its own from form of government to determine its relations with other nations and to develop its life, political, economic and cultural in accordance with its own genius and traditions. So again, the nation exists, it, it has inalienable rights, uh, even before the constitution. It is the entitlement and birthright of every person born in the island of Ireland, which includes its islands and seas, to be part of the Irish nation. It is also the entitlement of all persons otherwise qualified in accordance with law to be citizens of Ireland. Furthermore, and now it comes, the Irish nation cherishes its special affinity with people of Irish ancestry living abroad who share its cultural identity and heritage. It is the firm will of the Irish nation in harmony and friendship to unite all the people who share the territory of the uh, island of Ireland. So again, in the constitution, you actually have a call for the unity of Ireland. So including Northern Ireland, obviously. In all the diversity of their identities and traditions, recognizing that the United Island shall be brought about only by peaceful means, at least. So it's no like war declaration, so it has to be peaceful, with the concept of a majority of the people democratically uh, expressed in both jurisdictions of the island. Until then, the laws enacted by the parliament established by this constitution shall have the like uh, area and extent uh, of application as the laws enacted by the parliament that existed immediately before the coming into operation of this constitution. I don't wanna read out now everything, it's, it would be long. I just highlight a few more things in other constitution. The Swiss constitution, a couple of years ago, special provision was, uh, was, uh, was included, which prohibits minarets, the building of minarets, with the obvious uh, uh, message that Muslim immigrants should never think that they are equal. So, if you are German, French, Italian, or even Reto Roman, so there is this fourth uh, ethnic community, then Switzerland is an excellent place for you. If you are, a, I don't know, a Polish immigrant, it can be okay. If you are a Muslim immigrant, it cannot be okay. It's written in the constitution. You're not welcome. Then the Cypriot constitution, this is still the, the constitution of, of Cyprus. And it's, uh, it's actually painful how detailed this constitution is about the relationship between Turks and Greeks. This is a failed constitution, as you must know that, you know, half of, the, of Cyprus is actually uh, has seceded from, uh, from uh, Turkish part, seceded from the, from the Greek part. So it is a bit like, you know, dead letter, what is still in the constitution, but it's, it's very detailed about, uh, the, the president needs to be Greek, the vice president needs to be Turk. For everything, they have a, 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 a special rule, even, you know, two official languages, even they have, a, or they should have a, a 
Greek coins and and Turkish coins because that's even not you cannot even have it on one one single uh, banknote. They have they have to have to be like Turkish notes and and banknotes and and and, and Greek banknotes. One more, I would like to mention one more. Uh, 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 provision is Article 27A. So you have to decide whether you belong to the Greek community or to the Turkish community, and you cannot be both. Uh, and you have to pick one. Again, it's a problem if you actually don't really want to pick any of them, but you have to, otherwise you 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 cannot uh, enjoy the citizens' rights. And in Article 2, Paragraph 7.A, you have a married woman shall belong to the community to which her husband belongs. This is still the rule, according to the uh, Cypriot constitution. Everything uh, like uh, about flags and holidays, they have every, two of everything. And the Spanish constitution, uh, uh, just uh, very quickly, uh, it's a mixture of, 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 uh, of, of various uh, visions also in the Slovak and the, and the Croatian constitution. The trick is, for example, here in the Slovak constitution, so they begin with the Slovak nation uh, and then some uh, historical uh, uh, facts or, or at least a historical narrative to be more neutral about it, how Slovak nation came about and what's the history of Slovak nation. And then you have the, in the next part, Together with members of national minorities and ethnic groups, uh, we constitute the, the new, or we, we give this new constitution. You should be very careful how you read such a such a preamble, because on the one hand here you see that we, the Slovak nation, as a I, I, I put it in Italy, so as a as a group, we have certain rights, but then in the the so fourth and fifth line of the of the preamble you have together with the members of national minorities it's very tricky how it is formulated because they don't say that together with the with ethnic minority groups no it's just together with members of ethnic mi uh, of national minorities which means that the slovak nation is recognized as a group but at least in the preamble the ethnic minorities are only recognized as individuals because the members of ethnic groups do that and and the slovak nation so it's there is a, a difference in emphasis actually later you also have group rights for for uh, for ethnic groups but it's a, it's a tricky and conscious uh, uh, decision at least say how how it was formulated in the in the, in the slovak uh, constitution or the croatian constitution that's actually it has a very long preamble but uh, the only thing that i quoted here is the Republic of Croatia is established as the national state of the Croatian nation and the state of the members of autochthonous national minorities. Again, the same trick. Uh, they obviously influence also each other. So the autochthonous national minorities, at least in the preamble, are not recognized as group, but only the majority nation is recognized as a group, as a state-defining group, and members of national minorities as individuals are, are, are recognized. Hungarian basic law, that's an absolute mess, actually, uh, combining various uh, 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 visions. So it begins, we, the Hungarian nation, it was in the former sentence, promise to preserve the intellectual and spiritual unity of our nation torn apart in the storms of the past century. It's basically a reference of uh, of losing certain territories after the First World War, uh, where Hungarian ethnics are still living nowadays. The nationalist, nationality is living with us form part of the Hungarian political community are constituent parts of the state. So it's kind of a compromise or a rebalancing game. On the one hand, uh, it emphasizes Hungarians living abroad, but it also tries to be generous towards, uh, towards autochthon minorities, so Slovaks and, and uh, Germans living on the territory of, of, of Hungary. And the next uh, uh, paragraph of the preamble, we see our basic law is a living framework expressing the nation's will and the form in which we wish to live. And then it changes. So we have a text where 
the the subject in a grammatical sense is changing. So first we read we the Hungarian nation, and then now we read we the citizens of Hungary. And in the meantime, they also define that uh, that it's actually not uh, not the same. So it's it's jumping. The grammatical subject of the text is jumping from citizens to nation and then back again. And then some uh, provisions about uh, about uh, keen Hungarians abroad. And finally, the Polish constitution, I, I thought I'm, I'm also showing it uh, to you. Basically here in the Polish constitution, they try to str strike a balance again. So on the one hand, they refer to certain Christian values, but on the other hand, they also refer to, 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 to universalistic non-Christian uh, uh, values. And they recognize that actually, you know, the political community consists of, of various groups and some of them uh, uh, recognize the Christian heritage and others not. It's actually here, this part of the, I don't know whether you see when, when I'm, I'm kind of highlighting now something with my, uh, with my mouse, uh, but uh, that's basically the, the part beginning beholden, beholden to our ancestors for their labors, their struggle for independence achieved that great sacrifice for our culture rooted in the Christian heritage of the nation and in universal human values. So it tries to kind of balance uh, uh, you know, both, uh, both trends, uh, how to define uh, the nation. Should you define it with the, in an ethnic way by uh, the Christian traditions, or should you define it by universal human values, which would be more of a civic way to define the nation? So these are the 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 visions of the of the nation that I wanted to show you, and I try to stop the share. I hope I wasn't long and I was understandable and I would be happy to discuss any any of uh, what of the topics that I mentioned some of them were very you know cursory and I had to rush through them uh, so thank you again and I'm happy to discuss anything else okay thank you thank you very much for the for inspiring uh, uh, and I think very clear lecture so now it is the time for questions, comments, and discussions. Uh, discussion. Um, I will call everyone who raised uh, their hands. Uh, okay, Udita, you have a question as I see. So please start. Yeah, uh, thank you, Andras. Um, I like uh, Martin. It was a very illuminating lecture. Um, I guess my question has to do with uh, the word you avoided in your presentation, namely populism. And what would be the relationship of the populist logic to these various competing constitutional visions of the nation? It seems to me, at least as a first intuition, that the, popul the populist logic is most hostile to type E, that is uh, the constitutional vision that is based on civil liberties and, and it's grounded on a liberal discourse uh, of inclusion. Uh, and it's most sympathetic or compatible with either type A, uh, the singular ethnic because it's, you know, fits with the friend enemy logic uh, or type D even perhaps, which is that there is a sort of dominant uh, national culture. Um, so that's the first question, um, if you see it in the same way. Uh, and a second would be if you insert the distinction between left and right populism, it seems to me left populism would not so much be concerned with this issue uh, about uh, visions of the nation and that this is, Purely a sort of a concern for right populism. Yeah, so I mean, it depends, of course, which uh, definition of populism you are using. If you uh, want to concentrate on the fact that uh, that populists are, I don't know, we think Jan Werner Müller is has defined populism in a way that that you refer to the will. Of the of the political community without actually procedurally generating it, then then uh, uh, probably most uh, 
preambles uh, used uh, in constitution such a language. They refer to the will of the nation and nobody <laughs> actually as the nation or normally not directly. So very rarely you have, you know, like a direct uh, input on what should be in these uh, in these texts. So this they just presupposes this is the will of the nation. That's the type of rhetoric that you are using. So that's one thing. Like what kind of rhetoric you are using in the in the in the constitution. The second, uh, uh, and I think in that way, many constitutions are are populist, at least uh, in in uh, in a rhetorical sense. But if you ask yourself what more, not just the rhetoric in preambles, but about the actual rules in constitutions, then I actually agree with the, with what what you implied in in uh, in your questions that. Uh, Probably the classic nationalistic vision is the nearest to, to this one. It has also a collectivistic taste. Uh, 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 basically, it has a, a certain tolerance towards the, the violation of, of individual fundamental rights under circumstances if it's in the interest of, uh, of, the, of the political community of the ethnically defined nation. So, it fits to that. Uh, it fits to that tradition. And what, what probably the least uh, 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 compatible with with with, pop, with the populist vision that would be the last uh, the civic uh, ethnic, also the civic nation vision, where you define uh, uh, the nation by individual rights. Uh, again, it's it's more individualistic. So it, you you talk less about. Uh, a collectivist uh, uh, entity, the interest of which you would you would uh, you would implement uh, with, with constitutional ro ro rules, but you talk about individual rights, uh, and the whole idea is more the whole vision is more individualistic, which is again not you know not uh, uh, populist. But I think you should with this question you should separate the level of constitutional rhetoric in preambles, because then most constitutions have a certain populist taste. Maybe it's just, uh, I should think about, maybe it belongs to the to the genre of, of, of constitutional preambles. On the level of cons actual constitutional rules, you can separate, and I, I agree with your uh, suggestion. Okay, um, thank you, Andrew. So, so thank you very much, that was a, a great and uh, magisterial presentation of of the options uh, uh, of uh, how to define the nation or not define it on a constitutional level. So Udipta asked you uh, the question concerning which of these constitutional visions populists themselves uh, will uh, be uh, likely to ad adopt. And of course, uh, uh, this kind of depends on also the definition of populism, as you said. Uh, I myself always have the Schmidtian friend-enemy relation within it. So it is not just the terminology of the people uh, or even the idea uh, of, a, uh, of a part being special, but also the relationship to, to the other. Uh, and uh, and from that point of view, I want to ask you the, re the reverse question, namely, which of these constitutional structures, to the extent that they are part of lived constitutions and not just pieces of paper, uh, I, you know, I don't want to ask this about the Constitution of 1936, because uh, it has no effect uh, on, uh, on politics, but, but lived constitutions where the document is also part of material reality, which of these constitutions is the most likely uh, to cause or to generate uh, populist forms of uh, protest and self-organization? And is the answer all of them? Or is the answer some of them are especially prone uh, or what? Okay, so that's, that's my question, yeah. One, thank you. It's, I mean, one issue is which constitutions uh, or which constitutional visions of the nation can be defined along the friend-enemy line. And I think 
two out of the five, two of them uh, are defined along this line. One is their classic nationalistic vision that says, friends, this is us, and enemies, that's them, everybody who is outside, and either you should become one of us. I mean, that's kind of the more generous when you are you allow the minorities to assimilate, and in certain visions, you don't allow the minorities to assimilate, and you specifically exclude them. Uh, so that's the first vision is, is defined along the line, friend and enemy. But I think also the, the third vision is actually what you have in Bosnia and Herzegovina or in Cyprus. The difference is that it's more or less like a peace treaty on a constitutional level. So it's your enemy, but, but at the same time, you have to accommodate. You don't trust. That's, that's why you need so terribly long and detailed rules about rotation. So first, the even about the ministries you have in certain constitutions you have like the 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 the, the interior ministry ministry has to be in one period in 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 the hand of this ethnic group and the, in the next period in the other one and then at the same time the the defense ministry has to be in the other one that's the whole thing is it only makes sense if you if the distrust is so strong that otherwise uh, it wouldn't work as a matter of fact they normally don't work. So what you see is in Cyprus, that's a failed constitution. And also what you see in Bosnia-Herzegovina, that doesn't, I mean, it only works because otherwise there is no EU money going there. And there is also a military pressure. Otherwise, as a constitutional structure, it just doesn't work. So that's definitely a, a, a dead end. And your other question, which of these constitutional visions is more likely to generate populist uh, uh, movements. I think the first one is prone for, for basically an official populist uh, takeover. So the classic nationalistic vision that's very much adaptable to, to current uh, uh, at least right-wing populist uh, movement. So it's very easy for a populist political movement to get into government and to run the whole business along this line. And I, I think all the, all the other ones are more difficult. I mean, in the third one, you can have like various populist movements, you know, in the, I don't know, in the Bosnian or, 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 or Cypriot. But in the other ones, exactly because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's defined more along uh, rights, it, it adopts either uh, minority group rights, or it emphasizes the, the individual rights in the civic nation concept. I think these all, either the fragmentation uh, or the individual rights are in conflict with, with populist logic. So populists wouldn't really like the other ones. I think they would prefer the first uh, uh, vision. No, it's really, your, your answers are really interesting and I'm convinced. But here is a problem, you know, uh, I, I always work on a logical level, but there is also the empirical. So you have your type five, and then you have uh, uh, Marine Le Pen. Uh, that's the empirical. Now, of course, uh, you could say that internationally this thing is happening. And so you're gonna have it everywhere with your prime minister, and Stephen Bannon going to places and, and is trying to even help organize it. So it could be that no matter what you have, Orban and Bannon will help create populisms elsewhere. But that's not where Le Pen comes from, right? He didn't, she did not need Orban uh, or Bannon or anybody else. Uh, maybe she needed Jean-Marie Le Pen. Uh, everybody needs a father. But here's the problem, is that uh, the, the French model uh, uh, does not open up in some way the challenge that, of course, of course, uh, every citizen defined by the Constitution is part of the nation. Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, there are French people here who speak French, who have a certain kind of cuisine, who live in certain type of cities, who have certain kinds of gender relations. 
And what about, you know, all these people who, uh, who really challenge all that by their mere existence? And so in that sense, you have French fascism historically, right? And you have it for a long time, one of the first, right? And now you have this strong populism. So is it not in some way a response to the uh, attempt to exclude exactly this? Okay, I now really stop. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the question. I mean, uh, I have two answers to this. One of them would probably relativize the, the, the question by pointing at the fact that Nowadays, the French constitutional system is not entirely this classic uh, civic nation. As a matter of fact, also in the French constitutional system, you do have certain group minority rights. Actually, uh, Alsatians or Germans have enjoyed certain group rights, and even the, 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 the Bretons, and even you know, Corsica has a certain autonomy. But uh, that would probably just uh, you know, avoid the question that I. I see the point, and my most, most honest answer would be that what we see in France and in other countries, you know, and basically with any any major, you know, political changes or social changes like populism, you always have so many factors, and uh, you can also ask yourself what would happen if it was a different constitutional system. So. If in France you wouldn't have this constitutional system, but if you would, if you had actually also today like a classic uh, 19th century nationalistic uh, constitutional system, then possibly the you know the ideas of Le Pen would even have a you know a stronger influence. But that's very speculative, and again, you know, it's just so many factors. But uh, I can't give you any better answer. Uh, Anta, it's your turn. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the presentation. I already was familiar with your concept as I heard it several times in different contexts, and I love it. I love it. I think it's a excellent framework to, if you want to approach the political systems and the political ideologies, uh, the constitution is a very good empirical starting point. I think because as your illustrations, uh, the different constitutions are solving problems on a very fuzzy way and uh, they are full of contradictions and such, but still to model, it was, I think it's uh, absolutely useful. Anyway, but I want to uh, comment on, on your model that actually we can separate, you have the five models, yes? And uh, the first four, and the fifth, because the first four somehow try to, inc to include and moderate or control the cultural aspect of the society and the cultural diversity. The fifth one simply, simply excludes it. Of course, you mentioned the French case, which is one of the ideotype of this civic um, uh, nation concept, but still we, we cannot forget that, yeah, it's, on one hand it's absolutely true because as a sociologist, when I did survey comparative cross-national surveys, we were in trouble because by law, the French survey, we could not raise the question, what is the ethnic status of the respondent, we see it's it's obliged. Nevertheless, when there were several cases when you know Paris was burning and the peripheries were burning, on the screen everybody saw that uh, the colors are very special of the people who are burning the peripheries because they are they were very dissatisfied. Anyway, so this is but still they they try to because on a very Simply way I can say that it, maybe this was not the reason why it is such, but ethnic ec, cultural aspect of social life is so complicated, the best if we exclude it. And then we find a good 
point, and this is citizenship, which is a political legal category. And then we don't have to deal with the others. The first five, they try to manage it to calculate or even build on the cultural differences. Um, I think the, and this, this is partly an answer to Udepta comment that if I were a populist, right wing populist politician or ideologist, I think the number one is the best to me. Just, you know, to, to, to exclude everybody who are not, because, you know, the nation, not simply it's a collectivist concept, but it's a constituted concept. It's, it's created, it's a virtual, it's a virtual community, a virtual history, for example. In Hungary, maybe you follow that right now, there was a legal decision of the Supreme Court. A journalist criticized the wandering tribes, which later became called as Hungarian, but it was, you know, before the foundation of the Hungarian nation. And they punished the journalist because two guys turned to the court and said that this is this hurt their Hungarian national identity that he was negative about the wandering Hungarians who was burning the whole Europe actually. Even in Spain, they burned, you know, the monasteries and everything. So it's very interesting. But they created something and uh, and that that conflict is probably tried to uh, controlled and solved in the first four version different ways. Uh, but one disturbing factor came, I think, and that's, what, that's my question. And this is the migration. Because in an empirical sense, all the nations was based on migration. Let's see, when, when the different people came 500, 1000 years ago, they were migrating and were migrants. So the, the, the issue is that somehow the, culture, the, the key element is the assimilation. But the, because these people somehow assimilated. But there are the newcomers who maybe has a potential to assimilate, but who are not assimilated yet. And how we can reflect on the newcomers. The first number first says that we don't need religiously ethnically, culturally, this is one nation. We don't want to count anyone else. But Orban, I think Orban would be categorized to the number first. Even if the constitution, you are right, it's a mixture, I agree, it's a mixture. Mixture, but the, in politic, but the, the political action based on the Hungarian constitution, nowadays then I can say it's a conservative, populist kind of political period, the, the real attitude is not to let more problems to the country. We have enough problems with the Roma and the, and the Jews and the other minorities. Now we try to control in the constitution this question, but we don't need anyone else who are coming, including the Muslims and such kind of ethnic groups. This is why the Hungarian constitution, uh, the, the, later on, define the historical minorities, which I think request 100 years stay in the, in the territory of the Hungarian state and, uh, and, the, and the minimum number of people who are member of the group. These are recognized as an ethnic minority in Hungary, thereby the Chinese minority in Hungary cannot be recognized as a legally, constitutionally uh, accepted minority having special rights for example, political rights. Okay, maybe it was clear what, I, what is my question. So the crucial, first, do you agree with this kind of distinction between the four and the, five, and the fifth? And the second one is the question, what about the new, newly arrived immigrants to the country? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the differentiation. Uh, the five visions, the first four, are based on on an ethnic element, and the fifth one is a conscious uh, denial of the uh, conscious blindness towards the the, the 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 ethnic element. And the second question is that uh, what concerns the second your second question, I think that 
actually most constitutional system systems behave towards new immigrants in a classic nationalistic way. Uh, so as I mentioned, I mean, in Germany, it's very generous if you are a Dane near to the Danish uh, border. If you are an Italian in Munich, you have zero rights. So, uh, and it's very like, you know, in, in Hungary, if you are Chinese, you have nothing. If you are, I don't know, Slovak uh, living near to Seged, then you, you can have special rights. So it all depends uh, whether you belong to the to the traditional autochthon minority or whether you are a newly uh, coming immigrant and the attitude or the behavior, constitutional attitude is very, is very different. Uh, I also have a comment and a question. And since no one is raising their hands, then I will give, give the possibility to myself uh, to ask this question. So, uh, uh, I, I would like to refer back to the uh, to the um, uh, question of and comment and question of Andrew and Udipta maybe that uh, maybe it's not the right question that which uh, which uh, type of constitution triggers uh, populism, but the right question is how they trigger populism. And I would like to refer back to the lecture we had last week. Because maybe there are different, among different conditions, all of them might trigger populism. The first and the fourth one creates this, uh, this uh, 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 image of the unified nation or dominant lifestyle, which might be threatened by immigration and which might be threatened by new waves of uh, 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 people coming in. The third one, which is really interesting what you said, I think, including the conflict between the two parts and, and institutionalizing the distrust between uh, between the parts of the nation. But maybe the, the fifth one is also a triggering for populism because of the lack of this uh, uh, substantive uh, uh, element of the nation uh, because it, it, it excludes this aspect uh, that we have some kind of cultural, uh, ethnic, national roots. And then when people just like Andrew and, and also maybe Anta said that as we look around then we see that, okay, there are French, there are Hungarian, there are other. Uh, so this is the reality we, we live in. And this type of constitution does not recognize this type of, uh, uh, this element of our identity. So maybe, for example, in the Hungary, in the Hungarian case, if I, uh, if I, um, or maybe in Central and Eastern Europe, and after the transition, there was a strong uh, intention to create maybe this fifth type of constitutions. Then this is a failure of these constitutions that they not they are not recognizing these type of element of the identity. And as a reaction, a new populist wave is coming, which tries to build on. Uh, uh, the need for this type of identity, which is which which was all, always there. I mean, at least in the last thirty years. So maybe the right question is how to to how they trigger populism, and uh, maybe in relation with that, maybe uh, apart from that, I have also a question that in in the chapter you sent you uh, you discuss in some extent the, the role of religion, or at least mention it. So. But in the lecture, you used ethnicity mainly. But what is what is the role of religion in this whole? In this whole, is it just a proxy for ethnicity, or is it something something different? I'm asking because it seems that it's becoming more and more important again. And we sometimes speak about Muslim uh, immigrants as an ethnic minority, but they are not an ethnic minority. Uh, uh, but the religious, uh, religious group. And maybe in Ireland, this is important. The Hungarian Polish constitution includes the, uh, the notion of Christianity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Yeah, wow, it's complicated questions. I mean, one, the first one is what, what kind of populism and how uh, can, they can be created under the various constitutional systems. I would say that some of the visions, I mean, 
it can differentiate that in some of the visions, the constitutional system can be used as a vehicle in order to promote populist ideas, especially in the first one, but also in this, uh, actually in this Bosnian Herzegovina or, or Cypriotic uh, vision, it can actually, it, it suits very much. So it can, it can be used as a vehicle. I think in the, in the, in the, uh, this mainstream European vision, the whole idea would be somehow to tame these, uh, uh, these, uh, these emotions and, 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 and these moves. On the one hand, to tame the, the majority's uh, uh, emotions, and on the other hand, give something to the minority that they feel recognized. So that's kind of, you know, you can call it the taming vision. And the, num the, the last one, it's just, you just try to be blind. You don't care about it. And then you hope that the problem will go away. And sometimes <laughs> it does, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, uh, that's the whole idea that you don't, deal with the, uh, with the problem. It can also happen, I mean, I don't know much about the US situation, but possibly, at least in my conceptual frame, you could say that what is happening in the US is actually a, a, a populist movement requiring or wanting to have uh, the emphasis on a, on a dominant ethnic nation, which is actually missing from the from the from the constitutional system, so it's it's actually they want to have something else, not, not this uh, not this civic vision. That's, I mean, I haven't uh, worked out this uh, this idea, but that that would be one solution. And your second question is is religion, the role of, of religion. I mean, that's that's an that's an old topic, uh, like an like. A, it's, it's you cannot really give a definite answer. So in, in certain uh, ethnic groups, religion does play a role and in other ethnic, ethnic groups, it does not play a role. So if you want to differentiate the Portuguese and the Spaniards, then religion is not really a good discriminating factor because they are both Catholic, uh, but language would probably be better. Whereas if you want to differentiate between Serbs, Croats and Bosniaks, then they speak the same language even though nowadays they pretend that they don't and then they consciously are using uh, sometimes different words to emphasize their, uh, the differences, but actually the, the difference is traditionally just uh, the, the religion. So there is no generic answer for this. Sometimes ethnic groups are defined by religion. Some, and also it's emphasized like in the Greek constitution when you begin with the with an orthodox uh, 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 religious uh, uh, statement, uh, that's very ethnic. In other contexts, it's uh, it, it wouldn't be a good uh, uh, differentiating or discriminating factor. So we still have time for for comments and questions, and Andrew. If, 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 if this, the, the last point you are making can be made stronger because uh, you could say that the arrangement five, uh, it just occludes uh, the problem, but, but, uh, but those who speak about uh, non-liberal or, or illiberal democracy, very often phrase it as, as suppression. Now, United States, it won't be put that way because no one is going to attack the Constitution. See, that's not going to happen also on the right, on the white supremacists, even as they are attacking the Constitution of 1867. Because you can see that this whole debate about voting is an attack on 13th, 14th, 15th amendments, right? So they are, but they won't say they're attacking the constitution. But in fact, uh, I think that your prime minister uh, who has attacked the constitution of 1989, 1990, right? Uh, felt liberalism to be a straitjacket. A straitjacket for what? 
So it's got to be the nation, right? So in that sense, uh, 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 number five uh, is seen as the, as the enemy. Cosmopolitanism in the United States, it would be put that way. Liberal cosmopolitanism or globalism are the enemy. And in that sense, they are suppressing, they're suppressing who, would, who we really are and who, would, and who we want to be. Absolutely. I think one of the, if you want to put in a different way, the difference between the first four and the last one is that the first four arrangements or first four visions are about the interests of groups. And the fifth one is about certain universalistic ideas that uh, should be implemented in, in practice. That's why also uh, in, the, in the fifth vision, uh, if you read constitutions written along the, the fifth vision, very often you have a certain taste of missionary uh, ideas that they want to spread these ideas all along the world. All the other four are more modest. They just want to you know, keep their own uh, community or maybe expand a little bit, but not to the whole world. In number five, very often you have these taste of universalistic missionarism. Uh, Anta, please. Um, I just want to continue a little bit your comment about the fifth and how the fifth can generate populism as a reaction. And uh, to Andras, uh, it would be quite, maybe you have done this kind of uh, analysis, but the Hungary, I don't want to focus on Hungary too much because Hungary is, you know, in the, in the global sense, it's a, a minor place, but in Hungary, in, in that sense, it's very interesting because the first, the communi there was a communist takeover and the first constitution of Hungary, the, so the communist constitution, when created a, not, the, not a nation, but the people who were the communist people. The, I don't know how it was formulated, but the socialist people, that was the, that was the, the fundament of the, of the uh, 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 constitution. Then, after the transition 1989, I think, and that maybe I don't misunderstood, Marzi, Marzi's comment, there was a shift in the revision of, and the revision, the modification of the previous constitution into a new constitution in 1990, which was entered. There was more a kind of turn to the number fifth. Of course, there are a lot of mentioning of the ethnic Hungarians, how, how important, you know, to have these people. It was not a preference. It was not a question whether they belong or not to the Hungarian nation. Uh, it was a duty of the political circles and the society to have these people. Like, you know, for example, in the, lib uh, in the free, free liberal the Democrats, Bauer, Thomas Bauer, they took a position that, again, so the, the, the political nation, meaning that uh, those people are counted in the Hungarian nation who are living here, who are paying tax, who are contributing to the common goods, and those who are outside, and still he is on this position to emphasize the political nation instead of the cultural nation, he actually somehow neglected or did not realize that it may be counterproductive because later on the Fidesz completely changed in the fundamental law and put a preference that we are not 10 million anymore, but 15 million. The nation is 15 million people, including all the culturally belonging um, former Hungarian poly, uh, uh, population. So there's a shift in the Hungarian case, and maybe the, the 90s and this, uh, the new constitution in 1990 did not realize that in the society there is a need, a demand that somehow it has to be put on the ground of the cultural component 
of the national community. What do you think about this dynamic of the Hungarian story? I mean, I think most constitutions are a mixture of various uh, visions because constitutions are normally written in some kind of political compromise uh, process and various people are participating in such procedures and then you know certain paragraphs are written by you know one one political actor and then another paragraph is written by another political actor and theoretically they just don't fit together but that will be one constitution <laughs> and uh, i mean reality is messy also in a constitutional sense and what you also see is that historically the emphasis so it's messy but you can see that historically it's changing also the french story like you have the you know the french revolution uh cis actually it's really like this uh, the civic uh, uh vision and then second half of 19th century that's probably number one this classic ethnic uh, nationalistic vision how the french legal system worked and today it's probably more number four with certain elements of the civic nation but still certain elements of, of the of the classical uh, uh, nationalistic vision but probably france is 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 also part of this of this of this european mainstream so one dominant nation and certain uh, uh, protections for for, for for minorities uh, and that's the same for hungary so also in hungary you have a mixture of various visions uh, at the same time you have universalistic values even today in the basic law you have universalistic values it's a it's a list of, of uh, fundamental rights uh, so it's always a mixture. We are talking about emphasis, and also we are, we are always simplifying. And uh, are you how we simplify? That's uh, that's also a messy, messy territory. But I think that uh, that's probably true. That we have a tiny bit of less uh, of the of the civic uh, uh, nation concept in the Hungarian constitution. I think it's still there to a certain extent, and a tiny bit more of the classic uh, nationalistic one. But it's, it, it, it hasn't been taken over entirely. So that's just. OK. <clears throat> Any other comments and questions? Just, just want to that may, maybe also it's a question of how they use the constitution how they refer to the constitution because maybe the text is is uh, including more civic elements or more uh, commute uh, elements of the uh, of the of the other ties but still the the political reality can be can be also different and the interpretation can be can be also different a little bit which might also defines how we see the constitution as well. So maybe there is a dynamic relationship between the political uh, uh, reality and the constitution in in uh, understanding which type of constitution uh, a community has. I mean, that's one issue. And the other thing is that there are actual contradictions also in constitutional text. So if you have, if you read uh, uh, in constitutional documents that uh, all citizens are equal, but then suddenly you read that if you want to run for a public office, you need to be part of one of the two or three, then obviously they are not equal. So there are clear contradictions in the text. And then again, on the second level, also in, in reality, how it's implemented, that's getting even messier. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, I think the, po the Polish case is interesting. Right, because what you cited is the constitution of 1997. And of course it was a compromise. Uh, the left and center left were strong, but they had to compromise with the other side, especially because Valencia was carrying on a kind of campaign against the process. 
So they let in all those elements you, you cited today. That was not their goal, but they put it in. But the problem is today, once the uh, uh, justice and law party comes to power, is this still good enough for them? And they certainly, their official view is that it is not, but they don't have the famous two thirds of both chambers uh, to, to go to a referendum and to produce whatever they call it, a fourth republic or fifth republic. I forget which is the number, right? Uh, but in any case, uh, they have one that kind of works, but they want a better one for them. So that kind of indicates that from the point of view of Kaczynski, it's not, not the same. Now you can of course do things like you can pack the courts, pack, uh, pass uh, obviously unconstitutional statutes that the pack court will permit. So you can use, you can use the one but actually they desire a better one, right? So it makes a difference, it makes a difference. And Kaczynski is in good position to know, you know, us political scientists are tempted to say it, it doesn't matter, but it does. In your presentation, some of them are great vehicles, some of them are fields of compromise which can be used either way. And some of them are provocations. So there are really three things they can be. And it's not all the same. And constitutional lawyers like you will never say it's, it doesn't matter. But at least the rest of us in political sociology and in political science should recognize that the actors know that it makes a difference. Yeah, well, I totally agree that it makes a difference. Constitutions do make a difference. <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, I obviously believe that it's just that I, I think in, in this terminology, what, what would happen in, in Poland is that from this mainstream, uh, that was number four vision, this mainstream European vision, they try to switch, they try to swap to, the, to number one, to the classic nationalistic vision because that's more of a vehicle for, for that type of, uh, of, 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 uh, of politics. Okay, Carlos Alvarez, Marin, uh, is a question. So uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And I uh, wanted to ask you, maybe my question comes more from my ignorance in the topic, but I mean, you place the, the US the US, the United States within the category of the no nation over other or something like that, the fifth, uh, the fifth category, like there's no specific uh, nation acknowledged or recognized in the, in the constitution. So I wanted to ask you if the recognition of a special rights uh, for indigenous peoples uh, or, or original peoples undermines the sovereignty or the unity of the constitution as creating a new nation within the, a bigger, uh, a wider nation or um, with its own rules and with its own procedures, maybe uh, in some cases with their own institutions. So that maybe um, on another step, uh, maybe help to to understand why populists tend to attack minorities because they may they seem to have their own rules they play with their own rules and not with the rules of the bigger nation or the wider nation and that's my question thank you yeah so the u.s in this conceptualization is the is vision number five which is like the civic nation so nation is defined by citizenship, nation is defined by, by civil and political rights. Nation and the citizens are, are actually the same uh, and it's ethnically blind. And there is a, there actually there is one major exception, a traditional exception that was already at the, at the, at the time of the founding uh, for certain uh, Indian tribes, there were treaties 
which uh, were binding also on the US and these Indian tribes had a special legal regime, uh, basically uh, ensured by, uh, by, by legal instruments, which are exempted from the US constitution. So I would say that this is not a system within the constitution, but these are exceptions from the constitutional system. So that would be one. And the second one is that, that uh, you, uh, I mean, recently in the last couple of decades, also the idea became accepted in, in US constitutional law that as uh, a means to rectify past injustices, past uh, oppression of certain minorities, especially uh, slavery issues, you can have uh, anti-discriminatory measures, affirmative or positive actions, which are not ethnically blind. But this is again, an exception just to undo something that happened in the, in the past. So that's, that was in, under the constitution. The first one, the, the Indian tribes, that's an exception from the constitutional regime. The second one is within the constitution, like a special rule, but with a justification of what happened in the past. So it's, again, that's not, part of the original design. This is something which, I don't know, that was screwed up and then we have to fix it now. This is not how we meant, how it was meant to be. So that would be like in a very short way, the way I see. Okay, Anta. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I fully agree what you said that the uh, a constitution is it's a mixture of different ideas. It's a, it's a compromise. Let's say it's a compromise of uh, different efforts, and that's how it is created, and that's how we can interpret the constitution. And you also mentioned that we must, in the analysis, we have to separate the preamble and uh, and uh, the concrete regulations what the constitution um, uh, specify. But it's quite interesting, and again, I want to uh, uh, agree, continue what Marcy has said, that the political effects are quite interesting and maybe can help us to understand the trends, because there are trends. In, in Hungary, the constitution was, <coughs> the fundamental law was accepted 2011, or I think, as I remember, or 10. Uh, very very shortly, but since it was accepted, it was ten times modified, and these modifications are quite 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 informative. For example, they modified what is the family. It's a gender. It's a gen gender related, quite conservative. I even I can say a kind of populist kind of interpretation of the gender relations. They modified, uh, I see, as I remember, the, the freedom of religion because, uh, as I think that uh, they, live, they modified how a state can be recognized, a, 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 a religion or a church can be recognized by the state. That's also what I think belong, it, it belong to the modifications in the last, uh, um, 11 years. So in, during the 11 years, the, the, the recent government has changed what they did 11 years before. And these changes can, can, can maybe show us that what is the direction then and how the political uh, motivations can have a very strong effect on the constitution, which as itself could be seen as a very stable something, a stable which can be calculated and can help us to, um, to see to the future how we would like to manage our life and our society and our political um, system. Okay, that's, that was my comment. Okay, Andres, do you have a... Answer or comment to 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 answer. It was more of a comment. It's a, I think it's a, what what we need to 
I'm see and I agree with with Antal in 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 the fact that it's always changing these these uh, <coughs> the the way how the nation is uh, is arranged in in a constitutional system and one way to change it as as Antal said is to change the actual constitutional text and there's also another way is when the case law of courts of a constitutional court is changing. So you can actually have the same constitutional text. And if the case law or the judgments of a constitutional court are changing, it can slightly, I mean, radically probably not, but slightly it can change the emphasis of, uh, of the arrangement of uh, how you treat nations in the constitutional system. Okay. Uh, I think we almost run out of time. So, uh, uh... I, th I think this is time to, to close the, uh, the session if no one has a final last very last question. Okay, if not, then uh, uh, Andras, Professor Jakob, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. I think this was an inspiring lecture. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.